Hi there, this is Danielle Dunlop with a video for Possum Stems and today I'm sharing a card with you that I made for this month's color challenge. So I'm starting here with the Pumpkin Spice Cupcake Stem Sets and I love that it comes with a tray which gives your design more design options. Um, I'm also using the Radiant Burst Background Stencil and the Rotten Pumpkin Sequin Mix. I started by creating some masks for the stems I'm going to use on my card today. So I'm stamping them here on some masking paper and I fussy cut them. Now I'm working on my card front and I'm stamping the first cupcake here, the one with the little monster on top. I covered this image with the, masked, uh, the masking paper with the same stamp and then I'm going to place my next cupcake um, so it looks like it's going to overlap the monster cupcake, but because of the masking paper, it's going to be behind it. Um, so sometimes it can be a little complicated doing this masking. Uh, but just keep in mind that you want to start stamping with the image that you entirely want to see in the front. Uh, hopefully that helps you. Um, and then the tray is going to be last because both those cupcakes are going to stand on the tray. So you don't want to see that top line um, of the tray because those cupcakes are standing on top of them. After I put a mask on my tray as well, I'm going to work on my background. Um, if you use masks on all your images, it's a lot easier to use some ink blending with a stencil for your background. Um, you don't really have to pay attention on where you ex exactly ink up your background piece. So because of the colors in this, this month's color challenge, I wanted a purple background. And I used the Radiant Burst background stencil for it. Uh, and then I'm going to ink up the edges with that same Wilted Violet Distress ink. Um, so it's an overall nice purple background. I thought it was a little too simple with just a stencil and I like this little purple glow all the way around it. Next I'm going to uh, heat emboss my sentiment on the background. So I used my anti-static tool and I used this sentiment have a spooky and sweet Halloween from the sta same cupcake stamp set. Um, and it should be fine with just blink black versifying ink. Uh, but because of the purple background, I like a sentiment to be a little more visible and you can easily do that by using some clear embossing powder. Uh, First of all, black ink is a perfect ink to actually do some heat embossing on because it stays wet pretty long. Now I like to run my heat gun for a little while before I use it on my cardstock. It just seems to um, melt the embossing powder better. And then I like to start on the back. And then once you move to the front, you can see that embossing powder melting basically right away. And as you can see, this makes that whole sentiment way better visible on that uh, stencil background. Now it's time to take those masks away and to start coloring my images. My monster cupcake is going to be mainly green. I started with a YG17 for my darkest shadow. And then I'm going to blend that out with a YG03. And then my lightest green is going to be YG01. And I think with this green color combination, you pretty much have that exact same green that we have in the, in the monthly color challenge. With that YG03, I'm going up until right above the mouth of the monster. And then I'm going in with that YG01 to fill up the rest of the image. And those sprinkles on the cupcake, I'm doing that with G19, which gives a nice green contrast on that cupcake. Now I'm moving on to the next cupcake and I'm 
going with orange which is also one of the colors in this color challenge and i'm starting with yg09 as my darkest shadow and then i'm um sorry i think i said wrong yr09 <laughs> and then yr04 for my middle color and then my lightest orange is y38 And then for the leaf here at the top, I'm using the same YG03 and YG01. And then for the brown stem, I'm using my E40s. Nothing complicated um, shading wise. Just making sure that it has this brown color. Then this other layer of that cupcake, I'm going with some yellows. And I started with Y15. Then for the middle yellow, I use Y13. And I'm filling up the image with Y11. I'm not going to color the teeth of the monster, but I do want those teeth to look really white. So that's why I wanted to go for a really dark gray. Uh, I used C8. Uh, to color the inside of his mouth and that way his white teeth are standing out a little more Usually those little devil horns are red, uh, but I wanted to stick with the colors I'm already using for the color challenge So I decided to make them orange and I'm using those same YR09, YR04 and Y38 to color them I did want a little bit of purple in my images, but not too much since there's already so much purple in that background. But I'm just doing this bend around the cupcakes and I used V17, V15 and V12. Um, there's also black in this month's color challenge. Uh, I do not like to use solid black in my images. So I went for some uh, dark grays and I'm using uh, C8, C6 and C5 um, and also a little bit of C3 to color the tray that the cupcakes are standing on. Um, I feel like it's a little too solid if you just use black on images and with the darker grays you can still uh, create a little bit of shadow shadows and dimension in your images. For the wrapping of this cupcake, I wanted to use somewhat of an orange, but a completely different shade of orange, so not a super bright one. So I'm using my YR20s. My darkest is YR24, then YR21 and YR20. I really do like to use a YR27 in this combination too. It just happens that this marker of mine is pretty messed up and dried out all the time. Um, so I really should get a new one. Um, but usually in this combination of colors, I definitely use YR27 as well. Now for the other cupcake wrapper, I wanted to use a different purple shade because the Fee 12, 15, and 17 are very similar to the Vilted Violet Distress Ink that I used in the background. Um, but I wanted to stick to the challenge colors. So this is Fee 91 and Fee 95. And that will give you a little bit more of a grayish purple. So this is going to be a shaker card. And this time I'm going to do it a little bit different than usual. Um, these are the shaker pockets by Tonic, um, so you don't have to use any foam tape. Um, actually, you just need to make sure that your piece of cardstock is the right size. I had to trim it down a little bit so it would fit in there. So it's easiest if just three sides of that pocket, if you fold those over and then you can slide your piece of cardstock in it, that's the easiest way to see if your cardstock is the right size um, because i had to trim some of the edges off i 
inked it up again and now I have a perfect fit in there and then all you need to do is take off that red protective tape and you fold it over and you stick it to the back of your cardstock and honestly it cannot be any easier to create a shaker card um, maybe you feel like it's warping a little bit your cardstock in there but that also gives you plenty of space to make your sequin mix uh, move around so i'm using the new rotten pumpkin mix uh, by possum stamps and i think it's a perfect color combination with orange and black to go with the color challenge and once you're happy with the amount of sequins you have in there you just close it up with that last uh, strip and then your shaker card is done all you need to do is put it on um, a card base so i'm using double-sided tape for that and i like to just rest the card front and the card base on my glass mat and only remove the protective piece of the top double-sided tape and then once it's in place i can remove the other one and it's all sticking down and everything is perfectly in place I hope you enjoyed watching this card come together. We can't wait to see what you will create for this month's color challenge. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.